So we would like to start with this image in respect that if we were all in a live room, I would say, how many people rely on, this, on their smartphones? And I can guarantee 100% of people raise their hands. A lot of people usually raise both their hands. And it's for good reason. Um, our smartphones typically make us smarter. They give us access to data, whether it's for a work standpoint on how the direction to get to somewhere, perhaps to make us um, a bit more fit and ensuring that uh, we're not just sitting latent and not getting our steps in, if you will. But the point is we all rely on real-time data every day. It keeps us informed. It makes us more efficient. And I would say perhaps it makes us a bit smarter. But when you think about that, I'm, I'm sorry, that, Jill. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my cell phone. <laughs> oh yes, you were. And so, so most people may get a bit smarter. Uh, when you think about uh, the data that's flying around from a food safety and quality operation standpoint, there's data everywhere. And um, I know everyone on, online can nod their heads here and say, "Yes, there's data coming at me from everywhere," and, and you rely on that to really ensure your food safety and quality. But what's, what's interesting and um, the challenge there is because data is coming from you everywhere, how to best manage that? You know, in, in all these areas, you need to rely on that in order to ensure that your safe quality product, whether it's relying and ensuring that your specifications are being met from a quality and customer standpoint or your safety specifications from internal or, or HACCP protocols or FISMA protocols. Uh, making sure that information is being followed up, whether it's, it's CAPAs or indoor just, you know, checks that happen before a product gets out the door. Relying on data is imperative to making sure that you are able to do your job effectively. However, though, unfortunately, data is typically not available in real time. Um, we know this. We see this time and time again. And Dave is, um, you know, the world warrior, right? Dave is going out to tons of different prospect sites, and this is very common. We see forms being used to do all your quality and safety checks or um, inboxes being used to manage all your supplier compliance COAs and forms and data, tons of filing cabinets and, and piles of paper when an auditor comes to town. And again, the idea here is that without the real-time data, it's making your job harder, whether, to, you know, again, to be staying informed, more efficient, and more importantly, to manage issues at the earliest point possible. Jill, I'm sure there's, there's several of us on the phone that can remember the days when there's a pride of that filing cabinet. You know, we yes. look at how yes. great my folders are filed and, and I have everything in this proper order. And, you know, I, I think there's something to be said for that for sure. And, and I know many of you on the phone have created these great programs, but the idea that that data that lives on that piece of paper is just not helping you out. You know, unless you're spending the time to rekey that information or get it someplace else, it's just really difficult to come by. And, and we've also gone through some studies here recently. There's money behind that, right? Meaning just money simply in filling up that filing cabinet and then managing that filing cabinet as well. Um, but it is something that we've all taken pride in over the years. And I think that now it's starting to kind of get to a tipping point where maybe it's a little bit more in, in, embarrassing to say, hey, I got a, a room full of filing cabinets that I can't get rid of, right? I need, to, need the extra space, Jill. <clears throat> No, no, and absolutely. And I think that the concept and where we're going here is the data is not lacking. We know that programs are good programs are put in place and continuous happening to ensure that your programs are, are meeting the high standards of your customers internal as well as regulatory standards and non regulatory standards. But there comes challenges with that. Um, you know, the the reactionary versus the prevention. You know, how many people have, you know, looked at or looked at a COA that came in latent? And meanwhile, the product's already gone into processing or perhaps um, a check that didn't get done and it wasn't discovered until the manufacturing was already started. And then a few hours later, there has to be a stop. So all those challenges really do put you in, in a, a situation where you just don't have transparency or visibility. Certainly manual labor intensive. Uh, intensive. I know we all wear um, running shoes sometimes, managing and running around facilities and sites to make sure things are done. And then to what Dave was saying, you know, seriously, the, the being buried in paper, and um, you know, we used to joke about the forklift of paper, and, and I remember when our customers said, no, that, that's how it used to be. Um, but I think that the more discerning part is a lot of times the records are incomplete, and or more importantly, could be in, in, inaccurate, which definitely leads to the challenges. But if you look at that, there's risk with those challenges. You know, the, the main risk is noncompliance. Um, but you think about that, what does that correlate to? Um, you know, I've already talked about that, whether it's line shutdowns, shipping delays, 
um, the costs related to waste or rework, so those returns. Um, and then certainly the other areas, um, failed audits, you know, and, and higher risk is certainly a recall. Um, here at Safety Chain, we are acutely aware, and as I'm sure everyone is on this phone, of all the different news that's just coming at us. You know, the real-time data is coming at us um, about recalls and uh, much more in the last three, four, five years um, that we've seen the propensity of the consumer being aware of when something happens. And unfortunately, that is having a huge impact on protecting the brand and, and also the, the bottom line in the business. Um, so. So the truth of the matter is, Jill, you started uh, you started on a slide up front, Jill, where you showed a smartphone, and, and I'm, I made the joke that I was on my smartphone because I'm assuming the number of attendees yeah. we have on the phone today, someone's probably on their phone looking at something else right now. But the idea uh, around this, and this not only is it uncovering the data and helping that data become meaningful, but think about the other side. And I'll hit on this as I go through a little bit uh, later here in the, the webinar. But the idea that you've become accustomed, just like all of the consumers who purchase, who eat, who acquire your food, they've become accustomed, we've all become accustomed to instantaneous feedback, right? Something happened, all of a sudden it's on Twitter. You're so well aware of the news. We don't live in a news cycle anymore where every morning you get a newspaper delivered and that news is basically a day late. And, and then in the evening you watch the six o'clock news, you know, or whatever it is, the 11 o'clock news going back. But the idea is that news is now a constant cycle, right? And the idea that the quicker you have access to this data, with, whether that's a customer inquiry, whether that's a regulatory inquiry, whether that's just a flat out internal inquiry on how things are being done, uh, people are accustomed to very quick response times, not, okay, well, let me go back through my filing cabinets and find that information and I'll get it back to you in 24 hours. So I think there's a, another area here, Jill, not only of the risk or the brand and how we're gonna make that data smarter, but it's an ex expectation that basically in society we're all getting to today. The idea that instantly I expect feedback, right? This happened, you know, all of a sudden it's spread out across Twitter and Facebook and, you know, the news travels so much quicker today and the idea that access to this data and information, you know, in a moment's notice, in seconds, in one click, in two clicks to get access to that information uh, is quite helpful in protecting the brand, also protecting your name and giving that first, you know, that first blush, that first reaction uh, time is, is, has been quite helpful from our customers as well. No, no, absolutely, David. I think it, it's interesting because personally, if I'm not getting the update and on my personal stuff, you know, kind of off my smartphone, I'm not actually very annoyed with it, right? <laughs> People um, are expecting real-time data and what we're excited about and what can now be afforded to our industry, the food and beverage industry, is having that same efficiency in real-time data within your operations um, to make sure that you're getting the best results possible. So when you think about it, the really the impact, and this um, slide just sort of shows the, the cost of, of what it costs from a reaction versus prevention of discovery of a noncompliance or an issue. The longer it takes, the higher the cost, and, and we know that, and this isn't something that, you know, is earth-shattering news. But I think it's a real good visual in the respect that you have programs, processes, protocols in place. You already are defining and improving your programs based on whatever regulatory, non-regulatory measures, internal customer that you need to achieve. And the goal here is that to get conformity, to get everyday execution against those programs, you need to be able to leverage your data more effectively so you can get more into preventive, preventive approach versus reactionary. So I'll challenge you all. Really, is your data helping or hindering your organization? And we would like to propose that your data could and should be helping you a lot more than it is today. So I'm really excited to pass over the um, ball, if you will, to Dave, and he will share a little bit about the key ways in which technology can help. Dave? Safety chain. Reduce risks, control costs, ensure compliance. 